Hi all, welcome back to Technomog, the place where we demystify the world of IT and service management. Today we are diving into a game changer in the IT SM landscape, ServiceNow Problem Management. Whether you are a seasoned pro or new to the field, this episode is packed with insight that will evaluate your understanding and application of ServiceNow. So let's get started. So what is problem management? At the heart of ServiceNow is it problem management module. But what exactly is problem management? It's a strategic process focused on identifying, analyzing and resolving the root cause of incident, preventing future issues and minim minimizing the impact of business operations. And so basically, let's consider an example for an instance of if, if you're working in an organization, okay, and if you're facing an issue with your keyboard, okay, so you will be you will be raising an incident and the the issue will get resolved as a part of that incident. But the same problem is happening with around 10 people or 100 people. Okay. The common problem, the keyboards are not working for anyone, but then it will lead to a problem. The problem is like a incident which is occurring on a regular basis for multiple users. So why is it so important, right? In the fast paced world of IT, problem can escalate quickly affecting services and end user. Service now problem management module helps organization move from reactive RFID to a proactive stance, ensuring stability and high performance. So without wasting any further ado, let's get started. So as you can see on my screen, this is my personal development instance and currently it's on Washington release. So uh, we can't, there is no catalog item or there is no service interface for problem management. Okay, you have to go to the filter navigator to the modules in order to search the problem management. Or you can create a problem from incident also. How? Let, let me just show you quickly. So if I go to incident and if I go to all the incident which are open, I will open any random incident. And from this particular incident, you can create a problem. So you have to just right click on the context and you can see create problem. So this is how you can create or we have a problem management module. So if you type problem to the filter navigator, you will get this particular problem. So what all things are there in problem management module? First of all, let's see. So it's like create new through which we can create a new module assigned to me. It's pretty clear that whatever problems are assigned to me will be shown over here. Open, unassigned, resolved, again the status base. This is accepted is like we know the problem, okay, there, there is a expecting problem element where we know the problem, but we are accepting that risk, okay. So it's risk accepted. I If I want to give an issue around this, right. So for an instance, in our organization, oh, we are not allowing to use chat GPT, okay. So, but people want to use, so probably they, they may be raising a problem around the same, incident around the same that we are not able to access this particular request. But we are accepting the risk. Okay, we don't want to do it. So all it will show all problem problem properties are all the properties with respect to problem management. So let's jump in and create a new problem. So <clears throat> this is how the out of the box problem management form looks. This may be differ. Okay, based on your organization. So first is like first reported by. So problem can be created as we have seen from incident problem change. Anything from the task, the problem can be created, right? If I do star star or let's tell for this particular incident. So the problem got created from this particular incident. Then I want to let's take over the same example where the keyboard is not working. Okay. So it's a hardware component, right? So we will consider it a hardware and what do we have? So keyboard is there. Okay, so subcategory keyboard, you can also fill services, service offering and so on, configuration items, so on. I will leave it that as is. I want to make it minimum. I just want to increase the priority for the same. Uh, so based on impact and urgency, the priority will get calculated. And you can give the problem statement that keyboard is not working. So we will be looking at the process only for the problem management, how exactly it works. As soon as you type, basically it, what it will showcase, it will showcase all the related knowledge articles, okay, with respect to that. So the first and the foremost approach will be like, if we can resolve the problem uh, from the knowledge sharing itself, from the knowledge base itself. 
So I will just save it out. I will just submit it out because we don't want to with the short. And I will open this particular problem, which is problem zero zero two. Now what happens as soon as the problem get created? What you have to do the first step is you can either now oh, discuss. Okay, so basically what is discussion? So probably uh, for a, for an instance or, or you can follow on the if you click on follow so you'll be getting all the notification with respect to that problem okay you are getting looked in for that particular problem so if i click on follow so you can see you are not following problem you'll be notified on any comments added to this particular problem okay i will come to discuss also but before that let's move to so basically when the changes uh, when the problem got created the next step in order to assess that particular problem is to move it to assess state right okay so once we try to assess it up it will ask some mandatory so for moving to assess it's important that the problem should be assigned to a proper group and a proper person right so as it's a keyboard issue right i feel hardware will be the right person or right group to act upon it <coughs> and from hardware <coughs> we can consider david loop okay now keep one thing in mind i just missed one thing out Let's just jump over there. So what all people have the access to create a problem, right? That's the first thing. So if I jump onto this rows table, so I will say is underscore user underscore role. I'll leave this out for now. And if I search with starting with problem, so these are the four roles. Okay, problem admin, problem manager who can also deal with problem ta deal with problems and problem task then there is problem coordinator problem manager and problem task analyst so these are the four rows who can work on the problem okay so coming back to the problem which we were looking if i go to the same problem okay why i have shown you because only those person will be added to this particular group so if i go again back to the hardware i will assign it to david loop so it doesn't mean that in that particular group, in the hardware group, there's only one person called David Lute. No, that's not the thing. Basically, now David Lute is the only person who is having all the access. You don't believe me, right? So let's see it. I will just first save it out. And as soon as we save, as soon as we provide assignment group and assign to, it moved to as state, right? So one step is gone. And let's open the verify it out. And you can see. In this particular group, there are tons of members, right? There are around seven members, but we were able to see only David Lu because he has the problem related access. Perfect. So this thing. Now, as soon as the task get assigned, what we want to do, we will be creating the person who has assigned this task to, right? For example, David Lu. He will look into this problem and he will be confirming on the same whether he is the right person to act upon it or else he can read out read out it to the different group but for instance hardware is the right per, right group and is pointing to a right person so the david loop can log in and he can confirm that means he is starting to work on that particular problem so as soon as you click on confirm the task, the problem will move to root cause analysis stage now on root cause analysis what we can do we can create a problem for analysis and you can see there are two problem tasks okay problem task type root cause analysis and general so we'll be creating root cause analysis. find the root cause analysis only a root cause for this particular problem so we can give keyboard is not working just forget about the spelling mistake and we'll assign it to the same group hardware and we'll go to david Lou. And we will save this off. So as see, you can as soon as the task is created, he can simply start working on it. So if you do start, the task it has moved from assess to work in progress. So you can now David Lewis is looking into the problem and he is trying to find the root cause why the keyboards are not working. So on the analysis, what he came to know that on the software on the Windows software or Mac software, some patch is causing this issue, which is not allowing the Bluetooth driver to connect. Okay, and that's the reason the keyboards are not wireless keyboards are not getting working. Okay, so he will provide his root cause analysis in the work notes. Okay, 
need the Bluetooth driver. Okay. So he has provided his analysis and he will simply complete the task. On completion, it, it asks a lot of things to him. What was the cost code for it? So it was a software issue and need. I will just add generic things only need. Software update. Yeah, I will copy the same. I'll paste it out. But in the real case, it will be different. Okay. And it will click he will click on OK. As soon as you click on task and move to the closed state. Now let's go back to the problem. Now, from here, in every any step, uh, we can see this particular uh, message, right? Uh, this particular button called Mark Duplicate. So, you can mark the duplicate because if there is already a problem with the same issue, the designing in the system, there is no sense, right, in making the duplicate record. So, if you mark it duplicate, this will get closed and it will get attached to the other uh, problem. Then, we have accept risk. So we want to close it out and we know this is a known, pro this is a known problem. So now we know the root cause, okay? The root cause analysis is done and we came to know that there's a software patch needed. So what we'll be doing, the pro problem manager, he will click on fix, okay? Because now we want to fix it out. And what needs to be fixed? So we'll provide that Bluetooth driver needs To be updated. Okay. We we'll provide the same over here. Okay. Now you can see the fix is in progress. Now there is a possibility that fix needs to be done by the other team. As you can see, it's a software issue, it's not a hardware issue. So we don't want there's a security patch missing on the Bluetooth drivers. So what we can do, we can as a problem manager, we can, we can create a general task. We can give it like update load to driver. And now this particular task we can assign to a different group. Now which, uh, let's see, is, there is some IT securities, okay. As it's a security pass related thing, IT securities and let's see if we can find someone over there. Yeah, there's a problem administrator, okay. So he also has we can see clearly from the name itself. So we can create and we can provide the details to, to him that he, he should work on this. Okay. So as soon as you create, we again get the knowledge basis. Now he will work on this and he will provide the fix. Again, the same thing, start work. Start work is done. He has completed and he can update the update is done that means the bluetooth driver update is done and you can simply complete mark it complete so again on completion he has to provide the close notes what were the close notes the bluetooth driver read is completed okay and the task will get okay so the fix is also closed the fix is done we can verify the fix now again okay, what what needs to be done also we can move it to reanalyze if after the fix also the issue is still occurring okay then you can simply click on reanalyze and it will go in again in the cycle from the start okay but for now we can consider the problem is fixed first and you can simply go to resolve Right? So once it's resolved, we can we can do whatever is required. Okay. The analysis we can wait for a certain time uh, in order to in order to get the things done. We can also create a change out of it. Because for instance, here you can consider right the problem the, the problem root cause was software update needs to be updated, right? Now in order to do that change, we need to create a change, right? That's where you can if you right click, you can create I don't know, emergency change. 
for the same okay and you can simply mark it as complete at the end so this is the entire life cycle of the problem problem now once this is done okay you can see over here at the bottom we have one relatively called communicate fix so basically what it does as soon as the problem get complete or fixed now the next step is like to communicate to all the affected users right okay that the problem has fixed so if you click on this button what it will do it will send notification to each and every person who is associated with this problem whether it's coming from incident all the incident got clubbed in, into this problem people who will be there into work notes requesters so on and so forth everyone will get communicated with the communication so i will just do okay and it will it will send the notification to those people out okay now one thing i want to show you so i will just click on reanalyze so if you do reanalyze it will again go to root cause analyst okay and from there they can again start working on the same now one more thing now uh, if i if i go i just missed in the start right if i go to problem order again and if we go aim to some yes if we come come to let me this menu what is my keyboard is also not If thing go or and by create a new problem out it will create any dummy problem i just must to show you one thing so i will show you this and i will just give it like test okay so as soon as you move to as assess or let's not go to assess we see this button discuss right so what exactly this this is very important but then I, i used to use it a lot so what it does it will open a sidebar for discussion whom all you want to be a part of the discussion for this particular problem management right so for example i want abraham lincoln able to to then abraham lincoln so why it showing like that why i added it because they don't have the access on the problem management they don't have problem roles okay so you can only add those people who have the problem role if i type problem so for example problem administrator or if we take david lu because he was part of problem management right and you can like hey let's i was discuss on problem so what it will do it will it will create a channel for you to communicate with this people out you can add n number of people if you do start discussion it will create a chat for oh, it has already added those people out okay and then you can start working on it whatever you want and you can share the inputs around the same so this is how the problem management works in service now um i hope it's clear to you thanks for watching if you found this video helpful give us give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more insights into the world of it and service management until next time keep innovating and be happy